In this session, we definitely want to address all of the many and varied options for snapping and how they affect production. But before we do that, we really need to address at least one definition. Uh, that definition is the line box. In essence, a line box is a rectangle that, given the current configuration on the screen, would fully encompass every point on the line. Let me go ahead and turn on the line points. Uh, you can see I've got three lines digitized here. The yellow line has uh, many more points than the green line. They basically have the same shape and configuration and same general area. Uh, the yellow one just has more points, and we'll get to that later when we talk about snapping. The cyan line is very odd shaped. What we're talking about is when I say a rectangle that would encompass every point on a given line, the blue line is a rectangle that would represent the line box for the yellow line. So what that means is any time that I try to identify or snap to or lock onto a, a line, I have to be within the search radius and within the line box. So let me start up the edit line function. And if I try to lock onto the, uh, uh, the yellow line, click, and I have done that. If I go outside the line box, click, 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 and I am getting nothing. Go back inside the line box, click, and the line is identified. Uh, same thing with the green. The purple line represents the line box of the green line. As long as I am within that line box, I am going to be able to lock on to the green line. Uh, in things like edit line, it is whichever line I am closest to. Uh, go a little bit closer to the yellow, and it's going to lock onto that one. A little bit closer to the green, and it will lock onto that one because I'm in the line box of both of the lines. Don't think of this as an annoyance. Think of it as a filter. So when I get into areas that uh, are congested. Sometimes I can choose which line I'm going to lock onto just by making sure that I'm within the line box of a certain line. Let's go ahead and turn on the line box of the cyan line. And so you can see that that line box would encompass every single point that falls uh, on that line. Regardless of the shape, it is the extents of the line. So just make sure if I'm going to lock onto something, I need to be inside the line box. If I go outside the line box, uh, and let's uh, turn off a few, few of these things. So now I've just got the line and the line box, and so you can see that I'm outside that line, but I'm inside the line box, and so it will lock onto it without any problems. So the line box, it is a definition. Any time that I identify, lock onto, or snap to a line, I have to make sure that I am inside the line box. Now to think about snapping, Probably the um, easiest way to introduce a lot of the snap uh, parameters is to just look at the dialog where all of those things are controlled. Like most configuration settings, uh, the dialog is it's an efficient way to set a lot of things. It is not the most efficient way to set any single setting, and we'll we'll talk about that later. But let's just say that we, we want to look at the dialog where all of the snap settings are uh, configured. 
So we will go to Environment, Set Snaps, and that will bring up the Edit Snap Parameters. Uh, of course, I could use the uh, command to do that. SNA, SET, Snap Settings. And let's just go through these one at a time, and then we will look at them in practice uh, at a, uh, in a few minutes. First of all, workspaces to consider. The options are all open or current, if it is set to current, and you have multiple workspaces open, it, any function that snaps will only snap to entities within the currently active workspace. So I can have 10 workspaces open, one for each model. I'm working in model 3. If this is set to current, it will only snap to entities that are in workspace 3. All open just means that it will snap to anything. So if I have a model open as an edge, and I get over near the edge and snap to something, it will snap to something in my current workspace or the workspace that represents the edge. Snap to. The options here are all, lines, symbols, text, or points only. And that is just, just what it sounds like. If we're working in an area and I know I'm going to be snapping to lines and I want to make sure that I don't errantly snap to things like uh, symbols or text, then I can use this filter to make sure that I'm only snapping to lines. So there are the options. You know, if I have, leave it set to all, it will snap to anything whichever is closest and obeys all the rules. For example, you could be close to a line, but if you're not in the line box, it's not going to snap to the line. Search mode. Options here are the closest line point or the closest line. As we saw in uh, a few minutes ago, the yellow line has a lot more points than the green line. Uh, if this is set to closest line point, I can be very close to the green line, but if I am closer to a point on the yellow line than a point on the green line, then it's going to snap to the closest point. Closest line is just visually, regardless of how many points are on any given line, it is the closest line that we see visually. Once you click the button to snap, it can snap to a variety of points. Um, if it's snapping to a symbol, it's just always going to snap to the insertion point of the symbol. When it comes to a line, however, it can snap to any existing point on the line. It can snap to the end point of the line, so you identify the line and the snap always occurs at, uh, at the end. It can snap to the uh, uh, a mid point of the line, so here it's just going to go to the closest point of, uh, of the line, and then intersection will uh, we'll see that when we look at all of these in practice, what it actually, uh, what coordinate is going to be returned by the snap. The snap dimension, when I snap to an entity, is it going to just visually put the, uh, the cursor on the XY? but then keep the original Z wherever the instrument is at, or is it going to snap in 3D? So when we talk about the return location, that's when I click this, uh, turn snap on and snap to something, the return location is the XYZ that the point is going to be digitized at. So for example, the return point of, uh, uh, of line point would be, it would return the XYZ of the point on the line, an existing point on the line. If it's set to 3D, it'll take the Z from the line. If it's set to 2D, it will just visually snap it in two dimensions, 
but the elevation will stay at the active elevation. Verify snap. Uh, this sets it from a two-click procedure to a one-click procedure. If I turn verify snap off or set it to no, that means when I click it is going to find the uh, the the snap location that meets all of the uh, all of the filters and it's going to return an XYZ and digitize a point automatically without any verification that's if this is set to no if I set it to yes then what it's going to do is it's going to show me a tentative snap and then the next button click is going to accept that snap return the XYZ and digitize the point so this is a toggle between a one-point snap or one-click snap and a two-click snap. Ignoring failed snaps, given all of the filters and all of the possibilities, it is possible that nothing will be returned as a valid snap. When this happens, if I have ignore failed snaps set to no no coordinate will be returned and nothing will be done. If I have ignore failed snap set to yes then I can digitize a point if it snaps everything is valid I get a return point if I don't get a valid return point then it just takes the current cursor position and digitizes the point there. If I know I want to be doing a snap I know I don't want to miss anything, then I would have ignore failed snaps turned to no. And then after each time I turn snap on and press a button, it is going to look at the filters, look at the position, and return a snap point. At that point, normally I would have it turn snap off because I don't want to have it continually snapping on every button click. However, if I know that every single time I press the button I want it to snap, then I can say after a snap leave snapping on. Then every time I click the button it will search out a snap point based on all the filters and try to return a valid snap point. Those are all the snap parameters. They are they can also be accessed via a uh, command option. Uh, let me just make sure that everything is set to my normal snapping. All open, all parameters, closest line point, return or closest line is why I usually leave that. Return mode, uh, return any valid current point. Snap in 3D, verify the snaps yes, do not ignore, and turn snapping off after you find a valid snap. That's what I would normally have it set to. These things can be seen in the status line. So snapping is off. It will snap to all workspaces, all entities, nearest point in 3D, verification is on, after snap is off. So those are the snap parameters and all the different options that can be used when snapping. All right, now let's look at how the snap actually works out in real life in production. Uh, what we're going to do here is I am just going to start the uh, insert symbol function and I am going to insert a symbol using snap so every time I click it will insert a, uh, a red filled circle. Now just in order to illustrate some of the the things that that we're going to show, I'm going to go ahead and turn the line points back on. So what we have here is uh, three lines and four symbols. These are the symbols. And 
we'll use these lines for our snapping. Now there's uh, a couple of things. Um, I can actually just type in snap on and it will turn snapping on so I can see that snapping is on at this time. Uh, the button 0, which on the keyboard is the F11, is a snap toggle. So if I'm watching my snap and just uh, hit button 0, I'm just toggling that on and off. That is the same as saying snap on, S-N-A-O-N, S-N-A-O-F, or issuing a B0 command because any button that I want to digitize, and this is this can be handy in macros or uh, in programming, I can just say B0 and that is the same as hitting the 0 button. So that's uh, the way I can turn, one of the ways that I can turn snapping on and off. Be aware that uh, you almost always want to have that B0 or snap set in your input uh, input devices because you want to have snapping available at all times. So snapping, I can do it on, off, or toggle. Uh, again, the uh, S-N-A-S-E-T will bring up the dialog, or I can go to environment, uh, snap settings, and set it via the um, dialog box. All right, so let's go ahead and do some snapping. Let's go ahead and start up our insert symbol. And um, I think we don't really need to illustrate the idea of uh, snapping to things in workspaces. If I had multiple workspaces open, just be aware that it would not snap to anything in a non-active workspace. Uh, um, in this case, uh, workspace current would only snap to things in the current workspace. Workspace all means that it will snap to anything in any workspace. Let's go ahead and uh, play with some filters first of all. Uh, I am going to use the command line options. So let's say that I want to uh, snap to symbols. All right, I can say that I only want to snap to symbols and I can turn snapping on and I can get very near this line and you can see that when I click okay, um, the key dialog, let's go ahead and reject that, and say we're going to look over in this area for the uh, key dialog. So if I've got a failed snap, I have snap verification turned on, I have symbols only turned on, I am outside of the search radius that I have set, and so it is not finding those symbols. If I go within the search radius, you can see that it highlights the symbol that it's going to snap to. It is giving me a tentative snap, and I can either accept or reject that. Uh, next, we'll look for the next valid search if there are multiple valid returns. For now, let's just go ahead and accept that. So I have digitized a symbol using all of the, uh, the filters. And let's go ahead and we want to snap again, turn snap back on. And I see my tentative snap. Yes, that is what I want. I can at this point, uh, we talked about snap verification. Let me just say I want to turn snap verification off. Snap verification off. Again, I'm using the command. So if I'm outside the search radius, um, it's not going to verify and it's not going to ignore. I have uh, the ignore turned off. And actually I don't, but 
there it says uh, ignore off. Well, let's get uh, let's turn verification. Uh, leave verification off. Let's get within the search radius. Oh, and I have snapping off. That's the reason it's not snapping. So let's go outside, digitize. Uh, inside, digitize, and you can see that it just jumps, snap on, and it just jumps without any verification. So let's turn snap verification back on. Let's go through the dialog this time. Symbols only, close this line, verify snap, yes. And so now if we turn snap on, it's going to give me the click, click, two click procedure to snap to the symbols. So verification, um, it's a one step procedure. If I am have verification off, it is a two step procedure if I have verification on. Let's go ahead and set uh, snapping back to all. So now it will just go ahead and snap to anything and and for, for some reason it is not um, ignoring failed snaps and that's something that I'm I'm gonna have to look into because uh, it seems like it should but it could very well be that I just have something screwed up in my thinking all right, so now we're snapping to anything, and we have verification turned on. So let's uh, snap to a point on the line. We see the tentative snap because the verification is turned on and it is snapping to that point on the line. If I say snap again, it's going to snap. Ah, it is going to snap to the midpoint because that is what I have it set to. And that explains a lot. Uh, return the nearest line point. So here, by virtue of uh, just not doing what I think I'm doing, I'm going to snapping on, and it's going to snap to any existing point on the line. So I'm snapping to anything. I am closest to the line. And so it's going to find the line, and it's going to snap, and it is going to return a point on the line. Some of the other ways that we can snap to a line, um, we had, uh, and let's just get rid of all the snapped symbols so far. Uh, let's continue snapping to lines, and by this I'm just going to stay inside the line box and say closest to the line. Um, but instead of the nearest line point, let's go ahead and do a uh, snap intersection, intersection. In this case, it does not have to be a existing point on the line. So I can turn snapping on, and it is going to snap to this line, but it does not going to jump to an existing point. It's going to just move the symbol to the line, it shows me the tentative snap, that's where I want to go. And so we can see there was a line point here, there's a line point here. It did not jump to a line point, so it did not return. The snap return was not a line point. It was just any intersection perpendicular to the line from where it was when I clicked. So let's move off the line a little bit. We're still in the line box. We're within the search radius. You can see that it jumps to the line and snaps there. So if I say snap point, it will jump to a point on the line. 
the closest point on the line, but it has to be an existing point on the line. So you can see not only is it jumping to the line, but it's also jumping to the point. Snap intersection is going to jump to the point perpendicular and place the symbol on the point geometrically. If I do a snap midpoint, what it's going to do is snap to the center point of the line. So let's say, no matter where I click, nearest this line, let's go ahead and do the, uh, you can see that it isn't even necessarily jumping to a point on the line. It's not the point nearest the midline, midpoint. It is the midpoint of the the line. You can see the begin and end points of this line here. So when I do that, it's going to verify, yes, that is where I want to snap, and it is at the midpoint of the line. And the only other return mode is end. So I'm going to turn return end point mode, and when I snap to a line, it is going to jump to and return the nearest end point. I'm going to go to this side of the midpoint, and you'll see that it jumps to the other end. If I'm closest to this line, it's still going to go to the nearest end point of the line that I am snapping to. All right, so we're snapping to lines. We are returning end points line points, mid points, or the closest intersection. So those are all of the return modes for lines. As we proceed, there is one point of clarification that I should make, and that was uh, blundering through the idea of ignoring failed snaps that works in conjunction with Verify being turned off. Uh, if Verify is turned on, it, it really doesn't, uh, it doesn't really mean anything because every time if there's a failed snap, you still have the opportunity to digitize a point or not digitize a point. You can go on. Um, so the ignoring doesn't really make any sense. Ignoring does make sense, however, and let's look at the settings. If I have verification turned off and ignore failed snaps turned on, in other words, yes, if there is a failed snap, I want to ignore it. I can turn snapping on. So we can see that snapping is on in the status bar. And I can click as many times as I want. And if there is a failed snap, it is going to ignore that click. If I turn ignore failed snaps off and have verify off, I'm going to click and I'm still going to get a point. There was a failed snap. It's in one click method, but it's going to go ahead and even though it's failed, it's not going to ignore it, it's going to accept it. Now, if I get a uh, valid snap, turn snapping on, it's going to snap to whatever modes and one click but if it gets a failed snap, it's just going to digitize it wherever um, that was uh, that point was digitized. So let's um, go ahead and I'm going to turn snap verification back on. And I normally have it set to snap ignore off because I almost always use verification. Um, get into why that is uh, later, but for now. Let's just have it all set like that. So let's go ahead and look at our settings. All open. 
snap to everything. It's going to grab the closest line rather than the closest line point. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do some snapping. And in this case, we have it set to snap to the closest line rather than the closest line point. So, physically, visually, as I look at this, uh, no matter how many points are on this line, if I am closer to the green line, snap is on, and click, it's going to snap to that line. Even though this line point is way up here, and this line point is way down here, and there's all these other line points, it's set to snap to the nearest line. Let's go ahead and set it to snap to any line point, and snapping is on, and I'm closer to this line, so it is going to snap to that line. Now, let's go ahead and use the environment set snaps just to do this as many different ways as possible. In this case, the search mode is the nearest line point. So what we can see is, even though I'm closer to the green line, if I turn snapping on, it's going to snap to the yellow line because it's closest to the nearest line point. Uh, my guess is that if I you know, get really close in here, let's see, and I'm close to the green line, but I'm closer to a point on the cyan, and I turn snapping on, it's going to snap to the closest line point. So, if I set my search mode to nearest line, all right, no matter how many line points there are, I am closest to the green line. Snap is on. Uh, except I had snap on when I did the settings. Closest line. Search mode, closest line. closer to the green line, even though there's a bunch of cyan points, it's going to snap to the green line. So that's the difference between snapping to the closest line and snapping to the closest line point. Uh, if I, I'm in an area like this and it's just really hard, you know, which line am I closest to? Well, the only way you're going to find out is with the verification. Um, if I Go down here, let's see if I can go outside of, I'm closer to the green, but I'm probably not inside the green line box. It's going to snap to the closest line that I am inside the line box. So there we can see using the line box as a filter, uh, snapping to symbols, right? Um, right out here. See I'm outside the line box there, inside the line box there, and closer to the line than the symbol. It's going to snap to the line. If I'm closer to the symbol than the line, because I have snap set to all, it's going to snap to whatever is closest. So we have seen that if I turn snap verification off, I just get a nice one click snapping on. Snap verification, uh, snap ignore, it can be used in conjunction with that. Some of these things make a difference if you're in an analytical plotter because 
the really the only verification you're going to get there because you're not looking at the screen continually uh, is by having verification turned on and the instrument is driven to what is going to be snapped to. Uh, so a lot of those things uh, work more efficiently and better in a uh, in an analytical stereo instrument. Uh, some of the things in, in soft copy because you have visual feedback every single time. Um, you don't need to worry so much about the filters because you're going to see if it's if it's successful. You essentially can um, you know you can you can go on snapping and if you get a few failed snaps you can just hit undo you know just r right there um, if you know that you're going to hit it a lot of times you know that nine times out of ten you're going to get a a valid snap turn snap verification off you know that that one in ten that you do miss it just hit undo uh, usually you're going to have some sort of a a, a one button macro or something on a toolbar to to do a quick undo. So uh, the, the snap filtering um, really depends on how you're working, what kind of instrumentation you're working in, and how successful the snapping is going to be. Uh, the less successful it's likely to be, the more filters you want to take advantage of, whether it's setting it to snap to only lines or only text, or to provide verification every time it's snapped. Uh, those are all the kinds of filters that might be useful if the snapping is tricky. Let's look at the last couple of considerations in snapping. Everything that is in this file right now we can see was set to an elevation of 1000. So every point on that line is set to 1000 every point on every line is set to 1000 and if I look at the symbols that is set to 1000 as well. The reason I point that out is because what we want to do next is test snapping in 2D and in 3D. So we're going to go ahead and start up our symbol insert and we're going to say snap in 3D and we can see that indicated in the status area and so even though the active elevation is set to 500 and I can actually change that if I change it to 550 Z uh, 400 okay the active elevation is 400 and let's go ahead and the active elevation is set to 500 so let's go ahead and put a point in without snapping and when we come back in and look at that point, we will see that its elevation is 500. Now let's go ahead and with snapping set to 3D, let's go ahead and snap to something, that line in particular. And we can see that the line was set, the elevation was set to 1000 at the time of the snapping and the elevation is le the active elevation is left at the elevation that was snapped to. So if we snap to something at a certain elevation and then just continue digitizing, we are going to get that three-dimensional snap. I can uh, set the Z back to 400, and let's digitize one with no snapping, and then in 3D mode turned on, digitize a point, snapping, and we can see that our Z is back to 1000. So at this point if I was to look at that symbol all right it is snapped in 3D mode so the symbol parameters elevation of 1000. The one that did not get snapped all right it had the active elevation set at the point when we were digitizing. Now Let's go ahead and set the Z to 500, set the snap to 2D snapping. So the Z is at 500. Let's go ahead and start up our routine and snap to, let's see, a symbol. See that the Z is still 500. Snap to a line and 
just digitize with no snapping whatsoever. In this case, we can lock on to this symbol and see that the Z was left at 500, which was the active elevation at the time of digitizing, even though the line is 1000 and we snapped to the line and the XY is exactly the same as it, uh, it would be for that line point the elevation is set to 2D. So snapping in 2D, snapping in 3D. The other thing that is useful sometimes is let's go ahead and set that back to 3D. Snap 3D and start up our routine. This time though we are going to say after a point is digitized with snap on, leave snapping on. So snap after on. So we can see that after on is set. Now that doesn't mean that snapping is on yet. That just means after a digitized snap, leave snapping on. So I can still toggle snapping on and off. I can digitize points without snapping, but if I want to turn snapping on, I don't have to keep turning snap on. I can just digitize very quickly. I get a, in this case, I've got a two step verification turned on. So let's turn verification off and just start digitizing. So you can see that verification turned off snap after turned on yields a very fast snapping routine and let's go back to uh, what I would call my defaults um, all snap to all closest line return line points 3d verify snap yes that's just the way I normally work and ignore failed snaps no and leave snapping off turn snapping off after a successful snap so that's uh, that is um, what I would normally have my snap settings set to well because they're all of these have command line versions let's go to the uh, macro editor and say snap default. So I am going to set all my snaps to default using the you know, one simple command. And if I want, let's uh, let me SD snap default. So in this case, I want to make sure that the uh, snap workspace all is set snap all is set. That means lines, points, symbols. Uh, normally I'm going to leave it set to snap point so it's going to return the closest point on a line. If I want an endpoint I'll just go out to the endpoint. So it's going to return the closest point. Um, I'm going to set it to snap search line instead of snap search point. I'm going to have it snap 3D. I'm going to make sure that snap verification is on personal preference. Snap after is off. So if I add this macro for snap defaults SD and I could give it a more descriptive name, I'm just not going to. And it's going to add that macro. Well, how about a snap fast? Um, let's say snap fast is where I turn verification off and I snap to line intersections so it doesn't even have to have a nearest point. It's just going to go grab that line closest to where my search point is. 
So I'm going to say snap int for intersection. I'm still going to have it go to the closest line, not the closest line point. I still want 3D, but I want verification off. Um, snap after, let's go ahead and turn this on. So essentially what it's going to do is it's going to snap to any workspace, any entity, intersections of lines. In other words, don't require a point. Just go snap to the line. It's going to um, search for the nearest line, not the nearest point. It's going to go 3D. The verification is turned off. And after I snap, it's going to leave snapping on. So let's go ahead and add that. So that's snap fast. So if I say SF for snap fast, we can see intersection 3D verification off after on. So if I start a routine and turn snapping on, let's just see what we get here. We can see that it is just jumping to the nearest line. It's not requiring a point. It's not requiring me to turn snapping on all the time. Uh, if I get closer to a symbol, it's still going to snap to symbols because that was my preference. But it snaps very quickly, jumping to the nearest line and putting the point on without any verification. Now, let's go ahead to snap defaults, SD, snap defaults. Now, it is going to require me to verify. And after I snap, the snapping is turned off. So I have to turn snapping on every single time. I have to verify, still you know, snapping to whatever I'm closest to because I have symbols turned on. Um, but verification is turned on. So here I can see how I can set macros to switch my snap settings, uh, many of the snap settings, at the same time. All of the snap settings can be referenced in the help section or uh, we can see that we can get a good idea of what they are just by looking at the snap parameters. So those are all the different ways and possibilities and returns that you can use in production to make sure that you are snapping to the thing that you want to snap to. VR snapping.